Now on BBC One, lighting up with this lot. The ball went over his head. Oh dear. I'll be there. With David and Jonathan is the daughter of golfer Bernard Gallagher and the presenter of breakfast show Rise, who's on record as saying that guys who tell her she's lovely make her sick. So please welcome frumpy spinster Kirsty Gallagher. <laughs> Now, Gary is away this week, so our guest captain is none other than the Republic of Ireland manager, which is great news for us, but bad news for Roy Keane's dog, which has just been kicked through the television screen. <laughs> Mick McCarthy! <laughs> Weird Mick and Rory is the snooker-playing former captain on A Question of Sport, who regularly plays the game at home with his kids. It's backfiring, though. He's just dropped out of the top ten in his own family. <laughs> John Harris. Now, incidentally, this programme has been shortlisted as Best Quiz Show at the National TV Awards. A number of shortlisted shows like to put the number up on screen so viewers can ring in and vote for them, which we think is pretty undignified. And if you wish to vote before they think it's all over, that phone number not to ring is 09012 700 600. <laughs> we get things underway with our excuses round. David's team, his Paul McGinley's putt that clinched the Ryder Cup for our lads last weekend. This is for the Ryder Cup. <laughs> but we'd like to know Sam Torrance's excuse for his choice of international anthem for the European team. Queen's We Will Rock You, David's team. And before we start on that, Nick, can I just say <laughs> congratulations to John Major. <laughs> Yeah. Where the hell did that come from? <laughs> come on, all the chaps in the audience, haven't we all woken up with embarrassing curry stains down us? <laughs> Should we get back to the old question? Yes, we could do that. It generally takes about 20 minutes. Yeah, it takes well, we're well. just mm. excited. You like the golf, golf, don't you, Kirsty? I do like golf, yeah. Because your father was a golfer, I believe. He is still a golfer. <clears throat> well, okay. <laughs> So for you, the Ryder right. Cup then, us winning the Ryder Cup again, is that a big, a big thing for you this week? Yeah, of course it is. And when Amazing. Your, and when your dad, dad was the caddy for the team or whatever he did? Yeah, he just caddied for him. Um, and was that a big day in the, in the uh, Gallagher yeah, household? Yeah, it, it was. The best day of my life. Amazing. Well, that may have been the best day of your life, but today's not over, Kirsten. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Um, so he, he chose We Will Rock You, didn't We he? Will Rock You. When I say it, it sounds like an advert for a Chinese restaurant, doesn't it? <laughs> I know what I always look forward to with the Ryder Cup is the photograph of all the wives. <laughs> now there's 18 holes I'd like to tackle, I'll tell you. <laughs> no, before, you uh, before you start, that's, that's, that's merely a figure of speech. <laughs> didn't one of the European golfers, didn't one of them bring his mum with them? Sergio. Yeah. Sergio. What's his mother's name? Consuela. And she was over what, to sort of clean the rooms, what the other wives were? <laughs> It's known that sometimes people come to this country and start at that level. That's of enough! Girl. What? I'm only saying what the good ladies and gentlemen were thinking. <laughs> Not all the wives are so good looking. Well, there was one that I didn't fancy. <laughs> there was one in the... <laughs> oh, that won't save that, you here. That makes it I can't chat you up with David. It's like my dad's turned up with a disco ten minutes early. <laughs> so why don't you go off and pretend you're in a test or something? Go on. I'll be back in a moment. <laughs> Sweet. Stay right where Sweet. you are. No, but there was one of the ladies I didn't fancy okay. so much. Quite nice breast, plain face. Colleen was her name. Colleen Montgomery. <laughs> <laughs> Do you well, know what it is, Kirsty? I think you might. Well, so the Queen, Queens, surely. Americans. The Europeans saying, are the Americans a bunch of queens? Mm. Type of no, thing? not quite. No. 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 This, this is, this is Torrance Tor Tor having a go at his own. Just sort of at his own tongue. He's tongue, tongue, tongue three points. Own David Gower, thank you. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, I'll tell you something. <laughs> yes, the reason that Torrance gave for choosing a Queen song is that the European squad contains so many Queens. His words, not ours. Tiger Woods recently pulled off this invisibility trick at the US Masters. <laughs> He gets into golf clubs in Alabama. <laughs> now, on previous editions of They Think It's All Over, we may have given the impression that Colin Montgomery is a big match choker and perennial runner-up with huge wobbling breasts. <laughs> we now acknowledge that Colin Montgomery is an immensely talented world-beating competitor with huge wobbling breasts. <laughs> Mixed team, here's Ronnie O'Sullivan strolling through the World Championship quarterfinals in 1999. 52 in the frame. Another frame gets away from John Parrott because of the superb abilities of his opponent. He now trails by three frames at 5 2 to Ronnie O'Sullivan. Now, Ronnie O'Sullivan recently bought a building in Soho that is home to a number of prostitutes. We want to know Ronnie's excuse for owning a vice den. Mixed team. I know the answer to this. Do you? Yeah. It's actually because Ronnie is, is, is dyslexic and he thought he was buying a warehouse. <laughs> hey, what, would a, what a snooker player do in a brothel? Would, can you imagine Steve, Steve Davis in a, in a brothel? He'd been in one, actually. Yeah. Yes, yeah, he fell asleep on the bed because he was lining her up for three quarters of an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Why would he want a brothel? to entertain you, when you've got snooker to entertain you. <laughs> Mick, you know, I'm a bit disappointed with you. Because last sure time you were on this show, you were on our team. And now you're over there, and I know you've got some sort of excuse, like your, your grandmother was born on that side of the studio, but it doesn't mean <laughs> anything. That's not good enough. Why would he buy this profit? Don't know. You want to practice potting the pink? <laughs> oh, no, it had to be done. <laughs> No, it did oh, not bottle, have to be done. Bottle and snooker, you've got to say pop the pink. No idea. We haven't even done nudging the brown or anything, have we? <laughs> it has to be done, I'm sorry, it's one of the rules of the show. You've been on Question of Sport, haven't you, quite a bit? And there's an excuses round in that. It's when Ali McCoy's phones his missus. <laughs> Welcome aboard, John. <laughs> yeah, thanks very much. I don't know. I he really obviously don't know. didn't think he was buying a no. brothel. What did he want it to be? A theme brothel. A theme brothel. <laughs> <laughs> An Irish theme brothel. <laughs> Dirty Nellies. Yeah. Just a Would you like to go down the log flume? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a euphemism I haven't encountered. <laughs> <laughs> Any ideas over here? I don't know. We don't know. We don't know. Nope. According to the Sunday People, Ronnie O'Sullivan bought the building hoping to open a high-class lingerie shop but had no idea it had been taken over by prostitutes until the newspaper told him. The journalist concerned promptly made his excuses and came. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of that round, Mick's team have no points and David's team have three. <laughs> It's handbags now, all about the feuds that break out between sports people. Mick, Rory and John, your dispute concerns those former bosom pals and Republic of Ireland teammates, Roy Keane and Jason McAteer. Seen here scoring the goal that put Ireland into, and Holland out of, the World Cup playoffs. Steve Finnan in the box now, his cross misses everyone, except Jason McAteer, and Mark, and he scores, and Ireland have taken the lead. It's all over, Ireland have done it. They've reached the playoffs and Mick McCarthy has seen his dream come true. Well done, Ireland. So, what kicked off Keane and McAteer's dispute? Mixed team. Speaking of which, by the way, I actually read your, uh, Roy Keane's book, looked in the index, and there's no mention of you. Ah, uh, you're in the wrong index. You should, you should have looked under W. <laughs> oh. <laughs> w. B. Oh. <laughs> Didn't Mr. He Keane, when he was angry, didn't he tell you, and I think I'm quite angry, he told you to stick it up your bollocks. Was that the correct quote, do you know? Because <laughs> I, I believe that to be physically impossible. <laughs> and God knows I've tried. You know? <laughs> and so have many other people. <laughs> Actually, Shane Gay's not here because he once called Roy Keane, well, he describes Roy Keane as a talentless Irish puff. <laughs> if you're watching Roy, it's Gary, not <laughs> Alex Ferguson's whinging love child is what Gary calls <laughs> 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 
He lives in Berkshire, by the way. <laughs> Easy to find. An overrated leprechaun shagger is what, <laughs> is what Gary calls Roy Keane. Can, can you add anything to that list? <laughs> I'm just beginning to wish that Gary was here, actually. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a man you play and a scouse. There's always going to be a fight, isn't there? You're a scouse, aren't you, Pat, yeah. John? But you're not a Liverpool and you're an Everton sport, aren't you? I am. Are there any other Everton supporters in the world? <laughs> Here's one, they're good lad. Oh, Alex put his guide dog. <laughs> well, there's a number of things I think happened, wasn't there? But I, I suspect it was Jason's comments about whether he should buy his book before the before they met in the game. Said mm. something about buying a Bob the Builder book for his kid. Right? It's correct for three points, Mick McCarthy, well done. <laughs> Yes, when Keane's book was published recently, McAteer enraged his former friend by saying, I would rather buy the Bob the Builder CD for my two-year-old. He then followed this up with a sarcastic writing mime during the Sunderland United game, and Keane retorted by wittily elbowing him in the head. <laughs> Keane's book attacked his fellow United players as conceited, greedy, vain, and obsessed with their appearance. David Beckham was so furious, he leapt from his glass coach and slapped Keane with his otter skin gloves. <laughs> One of Roy Keane's complaints in Japan was that the Ireland team diet wasn't scientific enough. As a direct result of his objections, the squad now prepare their pot noodles with Lucozade. <laughs> David, Jonathan and Kirsty, your question is about the bad blood between Gary Neville, seen here mangling the Aston Villa defence last year. Roy Keane will take the free kick, and it's gone in! Gary Neville of all people, his first goal of the season! And Noel Gallagher, seen here mangling Oasis' latest single, Little by Little. So, why are those two at loggerheads? Cigarettes and alcohol, that was one of their songs. And also, I believe, Mick, wasn't that the Irish training uh, sort of diet? <laughs> <laughs> the Gallagher brothers, are you, is it, this, these are your brothers. <laughs> and you've shaved the Not bit quite. of the middle of the eye. Put, put, do, do, see how you look with a big one, big eyebrow. Look at that, there you go. Perfect. Hey, you know, Kirsty's not only one of the most beautiful women on the planet, she's also a talented TV presenter. And she does the, uh, the video show, the video blooper show, which I watch uh, with great regularity. Although, can I be honest, I don't think the camera does you justice on that. Because I tune in to You've Been Framed and you look enormous. <laughs> She also presents your, uh, you do the sport on Rise, the, uh, the, the new Channel 4 breakfast show. Yep. I've only seen it occasionally, that's when Mrs Gower has it on when she's doing my eggs and bacon first. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, she, she mentioned it. She said the Rise on the telly was the only one you could manage in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. Go on, hit him, he's worth it. <laughs> Is it a rivalry thing, because the Gallagher's are Man City fans? Well, and Neville's a music fan. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey! Oh, oh, oh. Hey, he's cooking on yeah, gas right. now! Davey's like one of those weird desert flowers that blooms only once every seven years, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> when it comes out, it's a beautiful thing it's to behold. Oh, it's just kind, it's kind. <laughs> Don't you know this one? I have no idea. We have a football game. Go on, mate. Do you, you know the answer? No. Oh, you're young. <laughs> Oh, you're a f***ing <laughs> <laughs> shut the work up, I'm <laughs> You! English gobshite! <laughs> now, the answer is that Gary Neville contributed a guitar to a charity auction and Noel Gallagher was asked to write a message on it. He wrote, and it's his spelling, Dear Gary, how many caps have you got for England? How many do you think you deserve? I'll tell you, f***ing none. <laughs> <laughs> Noel Gallagher, kiss. <laughs> Gary Neville is not the only musician in the Man United squad. Nicky Butt plays in a rock band. Why Diego Forlan spends many a happy hour trying to hit a cow's arse with a banjo. <laughs> Oasis were approached to write the official England World Cup song, but refused on the grounds that they're Irish. They actually come from the same part of Ireland as Mick does. England. <laughs> That's not to question the Gallagher brothers' Irishness, but they do think that County Down is a Channel 4 quiz show. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Mick's team have three points.
OK, time to ask what's going on. Mixed team, look at this. Oh, mixed team, what was going on there? I don't know what David was doing the last bit with his head down in his lap. <laughs> that was an interesting one, wasn't it, for all the hooligans, if you do not comply. I wonder if they didn't... Would they understand comply that? Comply on Facebook. What English supporters can understand that? Yeah, Quiet and down. Yeah. Maybe it wasn't comply. English supporters, maybe it was aimed at English uh, sheepdogs, because they shout, comply, comply. <laughs> Like those Japanese fans dressed up as, you know, those Japanese police dressed up as um, English football hooligans, practising chanting all those English chants like, Come on, England! You know, There's only one David Beckham! And, Get off, Hesky, you useless man! <laughs> <laughs> what accent was that, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> I loved it! Yeah, you you did it right right keen again, <laughs> I presume this is um, Japanese riot police is it, rehearsing for the advent of English supporters in the World Cup. It's basically correct for three points. Yes, well done. <laughs> I've got to tell you, I, I was in Japan at the World Cup, and as you came through um, sort of passport control, they would give you a piece of paper. They go, English hooligan, please read this. <laughs> English hooligan, please read this. <laughs> English hooligan, please read this. And the best thing was that just behind me was Trevor Brooking. <laughs> I didn't look at Trevor Brooking. English hooligan, please read this. <laughs> David Steen, take a look at this. There you, you're in. Now get in your queue. Oh, I'm going to get the pen. Right, you See you later. Hang on, there you go. There you go, mate. Yes, you've got me, Bob. Angus the monkey. Yes. Is that what the um, Cockney prostitute said to Angus Deaton when he wanted a 50 quid? <laughs> <laughs> the Cockney prostitute. <laughs> Hold on, I think we know who Jack the Ripper was. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get those Cockney prostitutes. <laughs> Some sort of monkey election. Are they choosing a new jungle VIP? <laughs> well, I'm the king of the swingers, ooh, a jungle VIP. I've reached the top and I can't stop, and that's what's bothering me. Oh, who are you? Sorry. That was the sort of noise John Major would have made with Amy. <laughs> Let's get back to basics. That's what they would have been saying, <laughs> yeah. I'll give you family values, you dirty <laughs> little mix. I bet, you, you, the European I bet you he said, any chance up the back, she said, the lady's not for turning, which is tonight. <laughs> Firstly, stop putting my name with hearts around it on your page. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, oh, well, I mean, look, I've seen this. He was the monkey, he was the bloke who ran for local office. Was it in Hartlepool? Yeah. Uh, and he ran for local office dressed as a chimp. And then when he got elected, he threw the chimp suit away, like all politicians, a hypocrite. He's the correct answer for our lawyers <laughs> for three points. <laughs> Yeah, that's a correct answer for three points. That was Hartlepool United's mascot, Angus, the monkey out on the hustings in May this year in his successful election campaign to become Hartlepool's new mayor. Stuart Drummond is not the only Hartlepool politician to dress up as a storybook character. Local MP Peter Mandelson has brought pleasure to many with his goblin. <laughs> Some teams' mascots have become almost as famous as the teams themselves. At West Ham, there's Harry the Hammer. At Swansea, there's Cyril the Swan. And at Leeds, there's Desi the Defence Lawyer. <laughs> and of course, at Chelsea, they have Ken the Arsehole. <laughs> and the score at the end of that round is David's team with six points and Mick's team with six points. <laughs> to grab hold of the sportsman now. It's Mick and Rory first this week. Mick and Rory, off you go. <laughs> Can we have our first mystery guest, please? Position. OK, you have 90 seconds, and your time starts now. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> Hello? Rory, is that you I've got I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what 
is this? Gary's come back. <laughs> Sweep's grown anyway. Have you, have you got your hand up his ass? <laughs> No, it's that's somebody. <laughs> this is going to be what's, it's, it's what's it called? Be a man. It's got to it's be the, that, uh, the big monk of it. Hangus. Hangus. It's a great answer. It's Kerry Anderson. Yes, Hangus. Well done, three points. Ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, can you move to your places, please? <laughs> Again, 90 seconds to work out who you're gripping. OK, blindfolds on. Can we have our second mystery guest, please? <laughs> Your luck's in here, Jonathan. And your time starts now. What's this? What the? Uh, Hi. Bloody hell, what's this? Hey! What have you got? <laughs> what have you got? I don't know. I, what have you got? Last time I felt this, I was I in the disabled toilet. <laughs> the other one was busy and I wanted to have a look around. There's a muscular arm. Ooh, there's another one. It's out, there's a body. <laughs> Give us a leg up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna investigate. You'll never get there. Give us a leg up. I'm going up after him. Don't worry. Help is on the way. <laughs> You're not. He's like half a man. There's only a little bit of him. What I do for a ferret now? <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's harder than it looks. <laughs> hey, it's quite fun though. Hey, David, have a go. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> oh. <laughs> I feel... I feel what, like I'm at the gynecologist. You... <laughs> so, oh, no, well, I'm stuck. Anyway. <laughs> Is this, is this our leading... <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. <laughs> is, is this our leading gymnast, Nick? Is it... Need more than that. Hey, never mind that. I want one of these for Christmas. <laughs> Jackson, is his name Jackson? Yes, Kurokai Jackson, that? well yeah. done. <laughs> if that display didn't impress Kirsty, then nothing will. So it's nothing there. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have nine points and Mick's team have nine points. We stumble to the finish line by playing the name game, and this week we'd like our teams to draw their clues. The leaders go first, which is neither team, so David's team, alphabetically. Kirsty, could you pass those along to Jonathan, please? You've got two minutes to draw <laughs> as many names as you can. Hold on. And your time starts now. All right. Pay attention. <laughs> Oh, Tiger? Is it a Tiger? <laughs> Woods, Tiger Woods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just rip it off. All right, here you go. Here you go. <laughs> go in, Montgomery. What? All right, here you go. Oh, Ian Thorpe, uh, yeah. what is the one not, not here? Yeah, Ian Thorpe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Is that 
Manchester United, it's, what's his name? Um, Spotty fella, these. <laughs> Yeah, Chadwick, 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 yeah. You're not in the toilet now, come on. <laughs> Is that a big enough clue for you? Oh, oh Sven. Oh. Yeah. Here we go. No <laughs> <laughs> Gallagher. Yeah. Thank good. Thank good. Angus. Yeah. <laughs> You've moved on to 16, so eight will win it for you, Rory. Oh, oh, Two no. minutes. Your time starts now. <laughs> <laughs> Very neat, by the way. Irish Roy Keane. Yeah. Me. Angus again. <laughs> Teddy Bear. Um, yeah, go on, go on. Teddy Bear, Teddy Bear. Teddy Sheringham. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay, sport. A bit more like Rolf, I think. Tennis. <laughs> yeah. Um. Tim Hanlon. Yeah. Hang yeah. on, I've done the shit yet. <laughs> 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 I'm pleased I got it before then. <laughs> so, next team have moved on to 15, but this week's winner is David's team at 16. <laughs> Kirsty, Mick, Rory and John, we're all off to visit Gary in the Priory. My name's Nick Hancock, they think it's all over, it is now. Jonathan Ross makes no secret of his admiration of David Bowie when he presents a special live and exclusive concert with the man himself. Tomorrow night from 8 on 88 to 91 FM, BBC Radio 2. Here on BBC One, the result. Fame Academy continues in 35 minutes after the news. <laughs>